Hey guys, how's it going? It's been a while. <laughs> we have been pretty busy with everything in our life and our car stuff. And we haven't uploaded in a while, but we have a lot of cool news that we want to share with you guys yep. again. And yeah, want to start? Sure, you're probably wondering what's behind us right now. <laughs> this is a 2005 Toyota Sequoia. Um, we bought this about maybe like a month ago yeah. now. So we're going to dive into everything. Why we have this car and where is Larry is probably your question. But we're going to dive into all that in this video. So I guess the big question that everybody has is why we sold Larry and our old Land Rover Discovery. Yeah. And the main answer for that was just I think we kind of overbuilt that car for what we were doing. Although we did, you know, take it on like a lot of rock crawling trips and stuff like that. Most of our stuff did involve like mainly like fire roads and dirt washed roads and and also just daily driving. Like that was my daily driver yeah. of a car, so it was just like paying like especially gas prices now and like getting like 8 miles a gallon like even re-geared even all the stuff that we added to it it still wasn't performing kind of like how we would hoped it would um also like it just it just kept having problem after problem approaching 200,000 miles which is another issue so long story short basically we sold uh the Land Rover yep. and within the within that day we got this car <laughs> <laughs> literally the, the same day we, we're like from this <laughs> weird dealer up in uh, san francisco area yeah uh, we got this car for about five thousand dollars and we'll do a little intro and a walk around to it it's basically a 2005 toyota sequoia four-wheel drive mm -hmm. uh and yeah so right now we'll give you guys a walk around and this should be our new daily driving road trip car and then we're gonna have a separate uh, rock cr rock crawling and mainly for off-roading and stuff. but it's gonna be more of a weekender let's yeah. just say that like this is more gonna be like an everyday car um, the Land Rover is gonna be more of like a weekender car if you follow us on Instagram you already saw a sneak peek but we're definitely gonna add pictures and give you guys all the details on that so this is a 2005 Toyota Sequoia it is a four-wheel drive model uh, now the reason why we went with this is the platform is so great right it has so much room in the back for us to like in the winter to sleep inside the car compared to a tent because we kind of struggled with that <laughs> the last winter we froze our asses off so that was one of the first reasons why we went with this another one was because the toyota right all the parts are so cheap compared to the land rover the reliability is so good so far it did leave us stranded once when we first got it like within the first hour but besides that the lift has been like super easy to find you know second hand the tires, the wheels, the bolt patterns, everything is like so common. Everybody has it. You know, the, the suspension is like can be used from the Land Cruiser to the Forerunners. And yeah, so just to walk you guys through everything, uh, we are running 35s. It is kind of hard to run 35s on the Sequoia platform. So we did do a lot of trimming and we still have to do more trimming. Uh, the wheels are the Met Method 701s. It's the it's a 7 inch, 7, 17 inch wheel and the tires are 315 7017s. So the car is currently on a, I guess, 2 to 3 inch lift. In the front we have the King 2.5 coilovers with 650 pound springs. We found those on Craigslist for some guy in San Diego. We picked those up for 700 bucks. Uh, those have been really nice. We took it on like a trail just to test everything and going like fast through hoops. Once the shocks warm up, they kind of like levels itself out perfectly in the front. In the back, it's kind of still iffy, but we're going to fix that when we fix the pan hard bar. So the front is perfect, although it does rub. We kind of did a jump and we bent the fenders out. Uh, my goal at some point is to go like a long travel with this. So yeah, let's see how that goes out. And then moving on to the back, we have OME uh, 2.5 inch progressive springs. I'm kind of not very happy about how the way they're performing because the the progressive part is already compressed so we're just on, riding on the heavy duty part so that I feel very iffy about that once we start going fast it's, it takes too much impact I feel like we need to go out to a lighter spring and regarding the shocks they are the icons which seem to be very perfect like they take heat a lot like after like a 20 minute run you grab them they're still like not hot at all that seems pretty good uh, the rear tires, same 35s. We are running uh, 1.5 inch spacers. 
so the front track is a lot wider and the main reason for that is the upper control arm with 35s to hit the upper control arm yeah like the goals for the future is to get an adjustable panhard bar and kind of move it up because right now the axle is all the way to the side it's kind of like it, it starts to act weird once you jump the car or like you know go very fast uh, we have a front bumper coming up it's on order and we're gonna do a video on how to make one yourself and we also have a rear bumper build that's coming the part everything is ordered so we'll do a video on that so there's a lot of differences between the Sequoia and the Land Rover interiorly. In here it feels a lot more luxurious than the Land Rover with all, like, we have a TV and we got like a whole navigation system that comes stock with the car which is pretty cool. Um, just like driving wise it is a lot smoother due to the front independent suspension versus the solid axles on the Land Rover. Another huge difference just between the car and just driving it on the daily basis is this car is a lot faster. Okay, I feel like we got a turbo in the back or something, but it really takes off. And that's even with the 35s and the lift and like everything with it and stuff. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. I mean, I'm used to driving my Land Rover and like being stuck at the stoplight and now I'm like zooming past everyone. Um, a huge thing too is like the gas mileage. So we're getting about 15 miles per gallon with the 35s and everything. So, I mean, that's pretty nice for me. Um, compared to my eight mile a gallon that I used to have. Um, other than that, it's just it's just a much quieter ride. Like I think with the Land Rover, there was always so much noise in the car. And here it's just, it just seems like a smoother, quieter ride, more comfortable. Um, we all, <laughs> David always complained how uncomfortable the seats were. And in here, they're much more comfortable. Um, another thing is, I think it's just all around a better long distance road trip car. I mean, I love the Land Rover, don't get me wrong. But going long distance, seven, eight hours on the road, this is definitely going to be a much more comfortable ride. I feel like quieter. Um, and yeah, and another thing is with the Land Rover, it's like all like all the time four wheel drive right you can either like it's always in high so you can either put it in low gear when you're off-roading in this car it's always it's rear wheel drive and we have a button four wheel drive which is a little different and so we could put it into four high or four low via the button and it also will come sock with a center locking diff which is pretty cool um we're gonna have more videos where we try it out and show you guys like the difference between the two off-roading but that's gonna be a little bit later once we get the other land rover up and going but yeah all around i really enjoyed driving this car for the few weeks that i've had it um i don't know i feel pretty cool especially because we lifted it and all but yeah i mean it seems like a fun car we could fit the whole family in the back which is nice but yeah all around i'm enjoying it all right so behind me here is our 2004 discovery 2. we got this car from copart which if you're unfamiliar with is just kind of a junkyard auction in a way um so we bid on the car we got it for 800 dollars it did come from new york which i don't know how it ended up here in california but whatever um it has about 160,000 miles on it and on copart on the website you basically buy it sight unseen you bid on it they accept your bid and then you just go pick up the car so on the car it said it did run and drive but you know we never know so we ended up um, you know getting a u-haul getting ready to just uh, tow it back home so on the website it said it did have mechanical damage um, it didn't specify what type of mechanical damage but you know I think I kind of assumed that it just had like a misfire of some sort so I actually haven't gotten the car to be able to start since uh, I drove it in the driveway after we just jumped it um, I've charged the battery I put new gas I don't know what the problem is um, as far as the misfire it could be a handful of things um, you know, coils, spark plugs, uh, I don't know. It, um, in our last Land Rover, actually, we had the clogged cat that was causing misfire. So it could be a lot of things. It could be the math. I don't know. So we haven't really dove into that too much. Um, we're going to figure out what our exact plans are with the car once we, like, scan it, see what the real problems are, really, like, look into the end. But I'm going to take you guys inside, and I'm going to dive into our plans and show you a little sneak peek of what the inside looks like. It's nothing special, but... All right, I'm now inside the car. Um, give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek. I mean, usual problems. It actually doesn't have any back seats, which is interesting. Um, headliner sagging. Um, just a few little cosmetic things that literally no problem won't worry about. I'm more worried about the mechanical aspect of everything. As for the engine and all that, I think what we're going to do is either LS swap it or do a complete engine rebuild. Another thing I want to mention about whether we decide to do an, a complete engine rebuild or do an LS swap is like the pricing point. So doing a rebuild and an LS swap, I feel like LS swap is going to be a little more expensive. Um, not by much, I don't think. 
just because we can get the engine from a junkyard for uh, for example and really it's the conversion kit that's the most expensive i know of a few uh different companies that make the conversion kit and i think it runs about two thousand dollars so engine rebuild is really going to depend well of course it's going to be include gaskets and other aspects and whatever but it's really just also going to depend on the state of the engine so i kind of want to do the ls swap not gonna lie i think it'll be really cool i think it'll be really cool for you guys to watch and that's what i'm kind of excited about so I think that's going to be it for this video. We just kind of wanted to give you guys a little bit of update on what our plans are and our new projects that we're going to be working on, which is very exciting. Um, we hope you guys stay along for the ride. And the discovery build is going to be a long one, but um, it should be good content. We're going to try to do our best to get the content out there for you guys. Um, but if you have any questions, as always, you can always hit us up on Instagram at overlanding underscore world. Um, but yeah, be sure to hit us with any questions, comments in the comment section. Um, we'll do our best to respond and yeah, we hope you guys enjoy. Thank you so much for watching.